Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live here on TV3. My name is Parko Siasari. Thanks very much for making time with us on this Friday. Coming up in the bulletin. Four killed and one in critical condition in Comanche fuel explosion in the central region. Also ahead in the bulletin, Parliament set to vote on the AGM Petroleum Ghana Limited oil contract will be live from the House. And on the international front, more than one million people evacuated as Cyclone Fanny slams into India's eastern coastline. We've got the very latest details of all these stories, plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. Be reminded that we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. We are interactive on Facebook and on Twitter. It's on TV3GH. Thanks very much for your time. Now, four persons died Friday morning when a stored premix fuel in a house caught fire and exploded. One person has also been left in critical condition after the incident at Comanche in the Infantiman municipality of the central region. Now, 3news.com central regional correspondent Kwame Kakraba, who spoke to an eyewitness, Mr. Kwesi Ahin, said residents were forced out of their homes to safety when they heard the sound of the explosion. The four who were in the house where the explosion occurred died on the spot. The timely intervention of police personnel from the Ghana National Fire Service with support from residents prevented the fire from spreading to nearby houses. While the immediate cause of the explosion is not yet known, but some residents are pointing fingers at the porridge seller who was said to have set a fire to prepare her food close to where the premix fuel was kept. She was, however, not in the house when the incident happened. The deceased, uh, the deceased, I beg your pardon, have been sent to the morgue at the Salt Pond Government Hospital. Now, the former Minister of Power, Dr. Kwamna Donko, says the AGM Petroleum Agreement, which has been laid before Parliament for review, is the worst deal Ghana could ever accept. According to the Member of Parliament for Pru East, Ghana's stake of 48% has been reduced to 18% in the new agreement presented to Parliament for amendment, a move that could cause the country to lose billions of CDs. The AGM agreement, which was originally ratified by Parliament in 2013, gave Ghana an initial 10% in royalties, with the option to purchase an extra 15% stake when oil is found. GNPC's subsidiary company, Exploco, also holds a 24% share in the original agreement. The amended deal submitted to the House for approval, according to the former power minister, gives Ghana only 18% out of the initial 48%. Dr. Kwabnadonko says due diligence was not done in accepting the new deal presented by government. The interest of Ghana must take precedence. They are asking for fiscal terms, the taxation terms, on the terms of um, ExxonMobil which again is a dilution of the terms in the original AGM agreement. Zoom Lion has 2.5% in the original agreement. That one has been taken away. If we are to develop the oil and gas sector, it should be done on the basis of fairness, and should be done on the basis of equity and also transparency. This agreement sends Ghana back and we must resist it. Dr. Donko, who is also the ranking member on the Employment and Labor Relations Committee in Parliament, says the new deal should be withdrawn and reconsidered. The haste at which they want to push this through, the haste is worrying. This is natural resource. This is our natural resource space. If we are not careful, we are going to sign away our natural resource for a pittance just to satisfy parochial interest. In a related development, former Petroleum Minister Emmanuel Amakofibua is asking government to explain to Ghanaians why the country is losing its stake in the AGM agreement instead of gaining. Now from my initial calculation, it means that they are reducing Ghana's stake under this amendment from 48% to 18%. Now, somebody has to come 
and explain to the people of Ghana how our stake, a country that is struggling so much for money, will reduce its stake from 48% to 18%. We need to understand. And said in Parliament, the minority has raised red flags over a potential loss of billions of dollars in revenue due to the amendment to an AGM Petroleum Ghana Limited contract. Now, ranking member of the Mines and Energy Committee, Adam Mutawakilo, has questioned why the state's interest in the deal will be slashed from 43% to 18% as a result of the review of the contract. Mr. Mutawakilo said the AGM agreement signed in 2013 has been reviewed by the Energy Minister, John Peter Meu, and will prove to be costly to the Ghanaian taxpayer. On 26 June 2018, the then Energy Minister, Bwachi Jako, wrote to the company, declining the review because it was not in the interest of the government. Parliament is expected to vote on the AGM Petroleum Agreement today. My colleague Komla Yayura Kluche joins us live from the House of Parliament. Uh, Komla, has the House voted on the agreement? Yes. Well, is, uh, the House is on suspension. It got suspended uh, from 30 minutes ago. Um, the majority leader of the Chairman was from the House when she was after to the two constitutions and statements. Uh, and then, uh, uh, Kamala, I'm afraid I've got to cut in. Your your line is terrible. I don't know what you can do about it, but it, it's. Uh, let's try for the last time and see how it sounds. No, Kamala, we're going to call you back shortly. We're going to go call you back shortly. Your your line is uh, really terrible. Uh, let's try and reestablish contact with uh, Kamala Kluche, who is live in Parliament, where the minority has raised red flags over a potential loss of billions of dollars in revenue uh, due to the amendment to an AGM Petroleum Ghana Limited oil contract. Now, ranking member of the Mines and Energy Committee, Adam Mutawakilo, has questioned why the state's interest in the deal will be slashed from 43% to 18% as a result of the review of the contract. Now, Mr. Mutawakilo said the AGM agreement signed in 2013 has been reviewed by Energy Minister John Peter Ameu and will prove to be costly to the Ghanaian taxpayer. Uh, on the 26th of June 2018, the then Energy Minister, Bwachi Jaku, wrote to the company declining the review because it was not in the interest of the government of Ghana. Now, Parliament is expected to vote on the AGM Petroleum Agreement today. Uh, let's go back to Parliament and find out if uh, the line has been worked on. Kamala Kluche is our correspondent. Kamala Kamala, can you? Okay, sure. Um, we're going to go back uh, to Kamala later on. I'm told we're trying hard to uh, re-establish contact with him. But away from Parliament, a mining consultant, uh, Seth Wolashime, says Ghana risk losing the war against Galamse. Now, speaking uh, on News at 10, the mining consultant suggested systems be put in place to track foreigners entering mining areas. The recent arrest of two Chinese nationals on April 30 for engaging in illegal mining at Sefi Abuabo in the Western North region suggests all is not well with the war to stop the illegal practice. This, this issue is, is not going away. Mm. And uh, it's, it's, it's not surprising because we know these things are going on. Uh, and at times it is not at the blind side of uh, people who are supposed to be enforcing mm. these rules. Mining consultant Seth Wolashimi was worried some officials at the local authority level are oblivious of the mining laws in the country. It is an offense for any foreigner to come into this country they can go into large-scale, medium-scale mining, that is fine. Unarmed but mining. not small-scale and artisanal mining, mm. which is reserved solely for Ghanaians. He noted the fight against Galamse is being lost. The mining consultant called on the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining to put in a system to track foreigners entering mining areas. We're losing it. Other countries have a way of controlling people entering mining areas. You need to go and get a special permission to be able to travel into a mining area. So they should bring up a system where permits are issued 
to people who want to go into these areas. We cannot find foreigners in our mining areas like that. They should be arrested. The fight is an ongoing fight. It cannot be won. It's not an event. Mm. It's a whole process. And therefore, systems must be put in place. There should be strategies that will make sure that people who are trying to flout our laws mm. are brought we to book. Well. Let's quickly return back to Parliament. Let's return to Parliament. Uh, my colleague Komala Kluche has uh, joined us on the phone lines. Komala, I was asking if indeed the House has begun voting on this agreement. Okay. Absolutely not. The House has suspended uh, seating until 2 p.m. because uh, what we do understand is that the paper is not ready yet. Mind you, the committee does a joint uh, finance and uh, uh, Mines and Energy Committee met uh, yesterday to deliberate on this controversial EGM uh, yesterday. And you're aware that Parliament would, uh, 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 Parliament closed session late last night. So they were unable to finish with uh, the work that they were doing. My understanding this morning also is that um, the committee has not been able to put together its report yet for the paper to be presented to the House. So the majority leader and then the, the leader of government business of, of the chairman of um, and asked the speaker this morning that they should suspend seating because virtually all the items on the order um, are not ready for the House to deliberate on. Let me just run by you some of them. For instance, we're supposed to move for an adoption of the Health Committee report on the protocol to eliminate illicit trade in tobacco products and also the adoption of the Finance Committee report on the on the request for a tax waiver in respect of the construction and rehabilitation of selected roads and interchanges phase one tax waiver request in respect of the implementation of one this one factory program, then repayment agreement of deals with the energy sector challenges and multi purpose terminal at the Takra report by Edith Tech. Then adoption of the Mines and Energy Committee report on amendment number one to the particular agreement relating to the South Deep Water Tunnel contract area. All of this, we understand, Parkway is not ready. The more reason we have had to suspend seating until 2 o'clock. As to whether the committee is even meeting, now we are unable to get information on it because um, everybody is tight-lipped about it. The minority is, is scheduled to hold a press conference somewhere around Two o'clock, we are not too sure whether it's going to be on this again or on some other issues. But as, as we're speaking now, part of it, the house is on suspension until uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Kamala, um, we understand that there was lots of disagreement amongst uh, the parties, the two parties, on this matter. Can you give us a mental picture of exactly how heated this debate was? Parkwood, I'm unable to hear you all. Can you repeat the question? Asking if you could give us a mental picture of exactly how heated this debate was in Parliament. Too well, I can tell you, but what is that was happening in Parliament? I mean, I, I, can, I can say for sure that when, when Seaton resumed this morning, they haven't even delved much into the issues that's on the order to be accept, uh, the issues brought in on statement and also the celebration of World Press. Freedom Day, but let's talk among members of Parliament. I'm Kamala Kluche, Kamala, Kamala, thank you very much for your time and uh, stay there. I'm sure we'll come to you in subsequent bulletins to find out exactly uh, the latest on this matter. Let's move away from Parliament. And First Sky Limited, contractors of the Adenta Madina footbridge, say the bridge is up to international standard. Now, reacting to concerns by a section of the Ghanaian public that the footbridge is too long and the design is not the best, the contractor said the footbridge is up to international standard. They explained that the design is to enable disabled people to also access the bridge. Now, some Ghanaians have complained about the nature of the footbridge. According to them, per the design of the bridge, it will take um, a lot uh, to be able to, uh, to use it. Uh, my colleague Wendy Lai joins us live from the footbridge in Adenta. Right, so uh, as you can see, the footbridge there, 
seated right in, uh, between Adenta and Medina. Uh, there's a lot of complaint uh, by pedestrians and motorists uh, with regards to the construction of the footbridge. Um, our reporter Wendy Lai has just gone there and she will join us uh, for live updates. So First Sky Limited, they are the contractors of uh, this uh, footbridge and they say that the bridge is up to international standard. Um, reacting to concerns by a section of the Ghanaian public that the footbridge is too long and the design is also not the best, the contractors said the footbridge is up to international standard. They explained that the design is to enable disabled people to also access the footbridge. Now some Ghanaians have complained about the nature of the footbridge According to them, per the design of the bridge, it will take a lot uh, to be able to use it. When Delay is expected to join us shortly uh, from the Adenta footbridge. Government, we awarded the footbridge contract to some other contractors. I, I have been here since 11:30, um, and I've seen that a number of people have used this foot bridge and also I'm currently at the Riz foot bridge and I as well as I can see some um, persons from the Ghana Society of the Fiscally Disabled here who are doing their very own assessments on the usage of the bridge but early on I spoke to the resident engineer for the Medina Denton access ramp to foot bridges construction in the personals of Shazu Dean Isa and he mentioned that for the six bridges that's for Firestone, Zongo, Medina, that's Zongo Junction and Red Core and then Race Junction SDA was an Adentan barrier. For Zongo it has stairs, Red Core has stairs, Race Junction where I'm currently standing has a ramp and uh, not stairs. SDA has stairs, was an Adentan barrier has stairs. He also took me through some of the considerations that were looked at before the construction of the footbridges. He did mention that the design is a reinforced concrete design and even though they have the same specifications, the designs are different. And he indicated that for this very footbridge, which is a raised foot bridge with a ramp, the intersection was taking into consideration that's the reason why we have this kind of I should say zigzag ramp here and um, so aside that um, this slope is a seven percent slope a seven percent slope was used for this and one of the other considerations that it took that was taken into uh, place was that they ensure that the persons with disability can use it without support. So shortly, I'll try and get to the persons with disability and also interact with them to find out what they make of the footbridge. But there's a lady here I can speak to. Hello, madam. Hello. Your name? I'm Princess. Princess, where do you live? Adenta Down. Adenta Down. Yeah. And is this your first time using this bridge? Yes, please. What has been your experience? I think is is the best is the best is the safest of all. Cause when you see you crossing down, going up and down, is the is very risky. But you taking the bridge, I think is the best. And when you look at all the bridges that they've done, this one, I think this particular one is the best one that I see. Mm. Yes. Well, thank you so much, You're Princess. Welcome. Now this is Princess. You just had her and her assessments of the footbridge. This is the first time she's using the footbridge. But early on, I also spoke with the engineer in charge, and I asked him if they had some meetings with the persons with disability on the construction of the footbridge. He said no, they didn't have meetings with them, but they used the standards that meet their needs for the persons with disability. He also mentioned that other considerations that were looked at has to do with safety and availability of space. So even though the specifications are the same, safety and availability of space was taken into consideration. And then he did mention that there are different stages of completion. One is already done, which is this very one, but the rest are close to completion. Now the project timeline is for May ending and he's hopeful that they'll be able to complete it. Let me move also to one residence within Adenta to tell us her experience. Good afternoon, madam. Your name and where you live? I'm Magnus. I live at Adenta. Is this your first time using this bridge? Yes. And tell us about your experience. Oh, it's very nice. 
It helps us to cross the road very easy. It's very nice. Okay. All right. So where are you heading to now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but will you still use this bridge again? Yes, yes, okay. I will use it. Now, I have to say that when we got here early on, we realized that people were still crossing the median. Even though this footbridge is ready, they preferred crossing the median. There are some gentlemen here whom I will be speaking to shortly. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Well, we have the assembly man here who will be interacting with us shortly. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And thanks for your time. Your name? My name is Rashid Wasebuzu. Rashid. Now, yeah. last year there were a series of protests. Yeah. And residents of Adenta and Ghanaians as a whole were calling for the construction of these footbridges. Now, we're currently at the Ridge footbridge and we're on the ramp. What do you make? Have you personally used this to the end? Yes, I have. Use the this is Ridge Junction, not Ridge, Ridge Junction, and I was here yesterday night because I felt that, you know, in the evenings is when people normally use these roads, especially when there's so much traffic and there's darkness. So yesterday we, myself and my brother, we used the pedestrian walkway, the bridge, and realized that there were some few issues. One, the lighting system, the whole place was dark, so it was a, a bit scary. Two, the real Rails at the middle side, the guards, the metal guards, are too short. I was suggesting that at least uh, it should be at the shoulder level of an adult. So that kids, there are a lot of schools around. Our kids, they are very clumsy, they play around. Whilst nobody is observing, they can just come, climb, play around, and anything can happen, something fatal could happen. So I was of the view that instead of that two bars there, it could have been three or four. So that when you are up there in the middle, you have no... Uh, opportunity or space to scale off or any other thing but apart from that it's okay i think the most important purpose was for people to cross and also for people with disability to have easy access and i don't know if you have seen i have seen somebody cross and the person is a disabled person it was comfortable and even motorcycles can use this thing i've observed that motorcycles can use this particular pedestrian bridge even though it's not advisable but they can use it yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. So I've been speaking to Assemblyman, but we're currently at the Riz Junction footbridge. I'm on the ramp now. And like I mentioned earlier on, there are persons from the Ghana Disabled Federation who are also here to do their very own assessments. I also did speak earlier on to uh, the engineer in charge of this project who did mention that although the specifications are the same, the designs are different. And considerations that were looked at was availability of space and then also the residents and the population within this very community. Over to you in the studio. Thank you very much, uh, Wendy Lai, reporting live from the Adenta Medina Fort Bridge. Now, away from that, uh, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has been speaking to mark the UN World Press Freedom Day as journalists gather in Ethiopia to mark the day. A free press is essential for peace, justice, sustainable development and human rights. No democracy is complete without access to transparent and reliable information. It is the cornerstone for building fair and impartial institutions, holding leaders accountable, and speaking truth to power. And this is especially true during election seasons, the focus of this year's World Press Freedom Day. Facts, not falsehoods, should guide people as they choose their representatives. Yet, while technology has transformed the ways in which we receive and share information, Sometimes it is used to mislead public opinion or to fuel violence and hatred. Civic space has been shrinking worldwide at an alarming rate. And with anti-media rhetoric on the rise, so too are violence and harassment against journalists, including women. I'm deeply troubled by the growing number of attacks and the culture of impunity. According to UNESCO, almost 100 journalists were killed in 2018. Hundreds are in prisons. And when media workers are targeted, societies as a whole pay a price. On World Press Freedom Day, I call on all to defend the rights of journalists whose efforts help us to build a better world for all. Thank you.
All right, so you have the UN uh, Secretary General, uh, Antonio Guterres, speaking on the day of World Press Freedom. And across the world, journalists have been celebrated. Over 99 journalists were killed in the year under review. Ghana lost its position as the freest country to practice journalism to Namibia. My colleague Martin Asiedu Date is at the celebration in Accra and joins us live. All right, uh, we're trying to reestablish contact with Martin Asiri Data, who's at the celebration of um, World Press Freedom Day. Now, weeks before the vaccine was inaugurated, my colleague, that's the malaria vaccine, uh, was inaugurated. My colleague, Asif Benwanyame, was in the Bono region to visit the Kintampo Hospital, where the research for Ghana was conducted. She spoke to the medical practitioners and parents of some children who participated in the research. Now, here's a short version of a story she filed days back. This is the Kintampo Health Research Center. Over the years, the center has conducted clinical trials into vaccines and drugs of public health interest. Between 2006 and 2013, the center conducted phase two and three trials of the malaria vaccines among children. The vaccine is ready to be used here in Ghana, together with two other African countries. We enrolled two cohorts of children, six to 12 weeks old and five to 17 months old. So what we found was um, among five to 17 months, um, the vaccine efficacy was 47%. Um, after following them up for 48 months. Um, for 6 to 12 weeks, it was 27. We did follow them up for the same period, 48 months. The vaccine trials did not come without challenges. There were some misconceptions about blood draw in the communities. Um, we did take a lot of blood samples so that I can make analysis to look at the safety issues. So some have issues, um, some will draw, but I might say few number of them, less than about 2% did they draw because of the blood issue. Um, the other challenge is once we were looking at the safety issues, even if within 12 midnight, if a child falls sick and a field worker in the community calls you, we had to pick up those children from the community. The news team followed up to Babatokuma, one of the communities where children were recruited for the study. Hakim Al-Hassan was six weeks when his parents consented on his behalf to be part of the trials. Hakim is now 12 years. Hakim used to suffer from malaria, but not anymore. Sheila, also 12 years, participated in the trials at six weeks. Her mother is excited her daughter took part in the process that would inform national policy. I was encouraged to allow my daughter participate because she was always sick of malaria. Her situation has changed now and I'm excited about the outcome of the vaccine. The vision of a malaria vaccine is definitely good news as beneficiaries are expected to be immune from the disease for up to seven years if administered four times, once a month for three months and then a fourth dose 18 months later. AC Benewa Otu, TV3 News, Kintampo. All right, so we're going to stay a while longer on the subject. I've been joined in the studio by Kezia Mam, who's a malaria control programs manager, and uh, Teria Evans, who is with the
Association for Ghana's Independence, is that it? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen and lady, for your time. Uh, so, uh, Casey, I'll start off with you. Um, I saw you at the launch. It was pretty successful. Uh, what's been the level of uh, progress so far? Um, so far, we are moving on um, well. All the districts that we expected them to start have started. Those who had their child welfare clinics on Wednesday started giving out the vaccine. So we are, we are happy with the outcome so far. Mm. Yeah, you got to say something. Yes, I was. I was <laughs> so I was going to say that the the only thing that we are concerned about is the misinformation that is going around with Which respect to the to the vaccine implementation. Mm. First, we want people to know that this is not a vaccine trial. We have done the trials in a number of African countries, including Ghana, since um, around 2009 to 2014, we vaccinated around 3,000 children, and we saw that the vaccine was, F was good in terms of reducing malaria. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. reducing malaria cases and anemia due to malaria. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a safe vaccine, just like all the vaccines that we've been using. Mm -hmm. This is a phased introduction because it's a, we want to know how it will fare when you put it in the routine system, especially because it's a four-dose regimen and people will have to bring their children back when the child is two, two years old. And now that's I'll come back to you. Different. Evans, you are with Ghana's Coalition for Independence. Uh, Coalition for Ghana's Independence. Coalition for Ghana's Independence now. And you're saying that this um, <coughs> vaccine administration should stop? We are saying that if like our mother, our father, our parents, which is the state, is not ready to bear responsibility. It's only civil and right in the eyes of human rights, fairness and justice, that nobody goes out there. Because the state has not hidden it. It's not implicit. It's explicit in the Public Health Act 2012. We are so lucky that we had our Public Health Act at a time where many countries have done the mistakes. At the, the days where people thought uh, vaccines are as, as holy as the Pope, developed countries have gone past that to say that vaccine is safe in itself will, will be problematic outside Ghana or Africa. But here, our Public Health Act will say that it is safe. Polio vaccine was said to be safe but there are a lot of people who can't walk. There are a lot of people who are in wheelchairs. Myself, I dragged my left leg because of polio vaccine. Fine. You understand? So what we are saying is that for the flames of the Public Health Act to even write that the authorities and the officers who go to do immunizations and uh, vaccinations should be indemnified and immune from prosecution, should there be an adverse effect after immunization or vaccination or during, she tell you okay, that- Hold on for me, Kasia, is that, uh, you know, is there a law that indemnifies? I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, mm. Well, I, 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 he's raising the Public Health Act. What I know is that um, as a public health physician and as being part of the Ghana Health Service, our aim is to ensure the health of the people. I don't think anybody would, well, let me speak for myself and for my institution, will bring something that will be harmful to people. If we stop vaccination, a lot more people will die from the diseases that kill us. A lot more children will not be able to reach their fifth birthday. The sex killer diseases. I'm not sure you've seen who pink off before. I've now seen them, polymyelitis. Yes, you've seen polio. How many, you've seen the complications of poliomyelitis. Do you have new young children getting polio now? The answer is no, because the vaccines has been able to work. Have you seen a measles case before? Not lately. Yes, because the vaccines have been able to work. The vaccines does more good than harm. And so I think if there is a supposed harm, it's, I, I said it on radio a few minutes ago. It's unfortunate that he had some complications from the injection um, from polio. But we should remember that the polio itself causes paralysis. So 
there I can't and I can't say what is the cause of whatever he had. But if there are issues, let's try and address them, mm. and not say that the vaccine is not good. Mm. More people will die if we stop vaccination. Mm. Last year, we recorded 5.5 confirmed malaria cases and children are the most affected. So what you're saying is that these vaccines have been tried and tested in other areas. Back here in Ghana, what we're doing is not trials. It's not a trial. Mm. We tried it even in Ghana, in Agogo and Kintampo, and it showed in your clip that you just sh mm. showed. This is going into the routine system. We want to learn more before we go into the routine system where everybody will use it, and that's mm. what we are doing. It's not a trial. You want them to stop entirely? See. What we are saying is that we are not saying, for me, from the knowledge I have about adverse effects of vaccine, myself, nothing will compare me to do it. But I know there are others who have the feeling that if they don't go for it and they get malaria, and they have good case, it is these people that we are saying that don't be in this irresponsible relationship with the state. I want them to answer to Ghanaians, are there possible advert effect of every vaccine, not even at the, we are not saying the, the vaccine at the trial state or at the complete, the, the complete vaccine Other itself. possible side effects? Of every, every vaccine. Every medicine, every vaccine. Exactly. Has possible adverse so, effects. But whether the adverse effects are severe as compared to not, not taking doing it at yes, all. Yes. yes, is what we so should So what we are at. saying is that mm. we started this campaign going through our public health act in 2015. You understand? Which even drew the London, the London School of Hygiene to come to Ghana mm -hmm. to interview myself, Dr. Diodu mm -hmm. of Noguchi, and other people. You, you don't so, think that you're, 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 uh, you are emotional about this? No, 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 no. I mean, don't you I'm, see your case as an isolated no, case? No, no, I'm not using my case. Mm. What I'm saying is that, plus, the company that is behind this vaccine, GSK, Okay, has a track record oh. itself. In 2009, they brought the uh, swine flu vaccine in Ghana. People had a shot. People had people were fainting and all of that because in Ghana, um, vaccines are. I'll give you the final word. Yes, vaccines are uh, holy. Nobody checked them, and even the people because there's lack of education. The people themselves, when they get adverse effect of vaccine, they don't even tra trace it to vac vaccination. Mm. And the same vaccine that was used in Ghana was used in London, and two people got brain damage from getting the shot of this vaccine. Again, again, two people is an isolated case. Exactly. Mm. Let me finish. Then... Can you, can you wrap up? Yes. Yeah. They went to court. Mm. Already in, in London, UK, mm. there's the, the, the state is responsible. Mm. When you get any adverse effect, up to 60%, you are entitled to... Can you uh, wrap up for me? Yes, you are entitled to 120,000 um, pounds sterling. Mm. And... GSK was forced to compensate these two people with $63 million. Mm. Plus, there's other programs. The state has been so responsible that the Department of Work and Pension takes care of every vaccine injury a program. Right. So what we are saying is that there, if 100 people go successful and one person get paralyzed, mm. that person has sacrificed his life for the Dr. 90, Kaiser, 99 you have a final people. Word. Thank you. You have a final word. That's so really my right. final word is mm. that the malaria vaccine is safe. We've tested it in Ghana. Currently, we are rolling it out in the routine system. I would encourage women and fathers with children under two years in the districts that we are piloting to go get their children protected. All right, from thank malaria. you very much. Dr. Kezia is where with the Malaria Control Program. Did I get that right? Yes, Dr. Yes. Kezia. And uh, Teria is also the, with the Coalition uh, um, for Ghana's Independence Now. Thank you, gentlemen and lady, for your time. On our MCN video report this afternoon, our citizen journalist Bawa Zakaria Abdullah uh, calls on authorities to rehabilitate the Tridon Mogo Road in the Upper East region. There is a looming danger on the Tinomologo Dorongo Road. As you can see, this particular bridge is at the verge of total collapse. And there is a similar bridge on this particular road, which is also almost at the verge of collapse. And commuters on this road are struggling to call on duty bearers particularly the assembly, NGOs, 
to come to the aid of Tinomologo residents before we record any casualty on this particular route. Reporting from Bolgatanga Centre, I am Bao Zakaria Abdullahi. And just like Bawa, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp on 055-143304 for the 055-143304. You're still watching Midday Life here on TV3. We'll take a short break and return with the very latest in business news. Hello and welcome back to the business news segment on Midday Life here on TV3. Now, the Greater Accra Markets Association has engaged the services of lawyers to explain to them bylaws by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly which affect their business. Well, according to the president of the association, Messi Na Afroa, some members have lost their rights to do business in the metropolis for inexplicable reasons. According to the association, the assembly's bylaws are drafted without their involvement and later imposed on them. They cited portions of the bylaws, which frustrates members by going through a cumbersome process to get places to conduct business. In the market, all of a sudden, the authorities will come and they will say, oh, we have sold this place, just move out of the market. So we have to consult somebody, but usually, Either we hire private lawyers or private, private legal practitioners or you leave it to, to die, then you move your things without being compensated, nothing. Their grievances have compelled an NGO, Women in Informal Employment, Globalizing and Organizing, we are go, to facilitate their advocacy role. The African Program and Law Coordinator for We Are Good, Dr. Pam Hejai Bamu, is confident those in the informal sector of the economy will be adequately equipped. We don't have um, the finances to reach uh, to have lawyers, so this is why we want to bring them together with lawyers to look at ways to collaborate. But we would also hope that they would be in a position to negotiate with local authorities to share their concerns and to be able to come to mutually beneficial arrangements to regulate their work. A representative from the Legal Aid Commission, Eliza Nantoma, encouraged the adoption of the alternative dispute resolution to address their problems. We also try out of court settlements that is through mediation whereby we resolve issues by inviting parties to see how best we can resolve the issue, not to go through um how do you call it? Court. It's not to go through the court system. That's all for the business news segment here on Media Live. Uh, we'll take a short break and return. Now, a new educative program on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals has been launched. Participants will have to answer questions on the global goals on 3FM's Drive Time Show, hosted by Giovanni Caleb, to win big in the three-month SDG Ghana Car Raffle, which has a mini SUV Mihandra as the ultimate prize. ...which is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. The Sustainable Development Goals, otherwise known as the Global Goals, are a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity. Aside empowering the citizenry, the launch of the National SDGs Car Raffle forms part of efforts to popularize and champion the accelerated realization of the global goals. The raffle, first of its kind, is also meant to inform and engage the youth about the SDGs. Participants would have to tune in and be a part of 3FM's Drive Time Show on 92.7 where vital information about the global goals will be shared. To win big, dial the code star 713 star 14 hash. Subscribe to the raffle and follow instructions to answer the questions. Listeners may also test start to the short code 1470 to be part of the game. Mouth-watering weekly prices are up for grabs. We're starting over the 3FM drive where between 2 to 5.30 p.m. each working day, you can tune in and get to catch all these exclusive SD 
SDG moment. We're introducing to you questions on the daily where you just play and then I'll also remind you that all these 17 goals are something that involves all of us. We live for the sustainable development goals. So clearly we are all ambassadors to this drive. The ultimate winner of the 90 day long campaign will drive home a brand new Mahindra Mini SUV. You gain more points as you play. The more you play, the closer your chances of driving this sleeker away. The general manager of Shared Services at Media General, Winfred Affo, urged the youth to grab the opportunity to learn and win big. I'm personally not lucky with winning, but I think I'm going to try because there's a car at stake. And it's not only about the winning, but it's about the impact it's going to make on people and their society. Because when you know, you are empowered. The more you are empowered, the more you are able to have control over your life. And so, um, I will encourage everybody to participate. We can do your best, play your part. These are important to Africa. The theme song for the SDGs Ghana Car Raffle was delivered by Viala. Switch. Well, that's all for Midday Life here on TV3. Thanks very much for your attention and also for watching. Uh, for more news, you can log on to our website, www3news.com. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari.